What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman here for Stochastic.com. Back again with the NBA DFS contenders on FanDuel for Friday, December 9th. Now, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman. Let me know in the comments section who are your favorite and least favorite plays. And finally, I got to give that shout out to BetMGM. It's the best deal you're going to find. If you're in a legal betting state and you have not signed up there yet, click the link in the description, head on over, make a qualified deposit of at least 10 bucks. You're going to get a $1,000 risk-free bet. So I'm telling you, take a shot on that first one. You'll get it back if you lose. And if not, you just win and you keep it. Otherwise, you're also getting two free months of Stochastic Plus Platinum. You won't find a better deal elsewhere. Take advantage now before it goes away. We're going to round out the bottom of my top 10 with DeAnthony Melton, Trey Young, Jared Allen, Buddy Heald, and Anthony Edwards on the outside looking in. Who will be my favorites? My top five plays for today? It's time to find out. First up at number five, we've got Terry Rogieri. is point guard, shooting guard eligible, 7,800. Projected for 40, the goal is 49, and he is in the optimal lineup 17% of the time. Massive minutes. Rogier out there for a ton. We'll talk about someone else from the Hornets a little bit later. It's a little over a fantasy point per minute guy, playing 37 minutes, 28% usage, 24 points, almost six assists, five boards, and a steal. It's a pace neutral matchup against the Knicks, but this is a playing time thing. No LaMelo ball, no Gordon Hayward. All the minutes, all the usage to go around, and a very reasonable price tag for Terry Rozier. Next up at number four, I'm looking at Jordan Clarkson, assuming he's in. Point guard, shooting guard eligible, 6,600. Projected for 35, the goal is 43. He's in the optimal lineup 18% of the time. 35 minutes for Clarkson. I we, we could see a couple guys out. Colin Sexton is definitely out. He's around a fantasy point per minute guy. 26% usage. It's a lot of scoring, but it's not just scoring. 22 points, five assists, five boards. The real appeal here for Jordan Clarkson, massive pace up spot against Minnesota. They gain 3.6 possessions over their average. It should be a competitive game. You get the Rudy Gobert narrative as well. It's just going to be a fun one all around. This Jordan Clarkson price just isn't correct. To Orlando, we go for number three. That's Markel Fultz. Point guard, shooting guard eligible. Just 4,600. Projected for 27. The goal is 33. He's in the optimal lineup 21% of the time. Fultz is playing starter minutes. Uh, foul trouble made it look a little bit weirder for this last one, but I'm giving him 30. He's around a fantasy point per minute guy. Even being pessimistic for this matchup against Toronto, 0.9 fantasy points per minute. 22% usage, 12 points, 5 assists, and 4 boards, plus a stock and a half. It is a pace down spot. They are sizable underdogs, but when games are competitive, when he can be out there not in foul trouble, you're getting 30 minutes a game out of Marco Fultz. He's the starting point guard. He's giving you that first quarter, second quarter, third quarter closing rotation. That works for me at 4,600. At number two, I'm looking at Kyle Kuzma, small forward, power forward eligible, 7,500, projected for 40 and a half. The goal is 47 and a half. He's in the optimal lineup 22% of the time. No Bradley Beal just opens things up even more for Kuzma. 36 minutes, 1.1 fantasy points per minute. Just underpriced, in my opinion, for his role. It's a massive pace up spot against Indiana. Pacers are basically the fastest team in the league. You get 24 points on 29% usage, eight rebounds, three and a half assists, probably a stock. The matchup's fantastic. The roll with no Beal is fantastic. It's also possible there's no Kristaps Porzingis, so it gets even better. Don't even think twice. Just play some Kyle Kuzma. Now, before we get to that number one contender, one last reminder, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when everything goes live. Follow me on Twitter at Josh Engelman. Let me know in the comment section who your favorite plays are, and then go sign up at BetMGM using the link in the description. Your number one contender for today is also on the Wizards. That is Denny Avdia. Small forward, power forward, eligible, 5,500, projected for 31 and a half. The goal is 37 and a half. He's in the optimal lineup 23% of the time playing massive minutes in games without Bradley Beal. I gave him 34 here. He's a 0.9 fantasy point per minute guy, and he hits multiple statistical categories. 16% usage, so he's just not scoring dependent. 11 and a half points, eight rebounds, four assists, and two stocks in that same incredible matchup against Indiana. He's just going to be out there. We got a couple Q tags as well. If Porzingis is out, he looks even better. It's just even easier. Will Barton has a Q tag. Those minutes become even more firm if Barton happens to be out, but even with both guys in, I think Denny Avdia is the best play that you can find on FanDuel. 
Alrighty, folks, that will do it. Those are my NBA DFS contenders on FanDuel for Friday, December 9th. DraftKings version's around here somewhere. Check it out. Good luck tonight, everybody. Win some money. We are back again Sunday morning for another edition of The Contenders.